we remember our ancestors today. We remember the history of this place. We look forward with great hope and a great vision. A World War II internment camp that was shut down in 1946 and long since forgotten is now a national historic monument. It's a powerful emotional story that needs to be told. It's at this site, this wall, where the Huno Uli Uli internment camp was located. At the dedication ceremony, the Hono Uli Uli internment camp, hidden in an overgrown gulch in Kunia, was blessed twice, once by Reverend Kaleo Patterson and by a Shinto priest. Ho'o mai mai, make clean of any impurity of thought or design this land upon which we stand. If there are any kapus or stipulations of any kind, we ask that you oki, cut away, make this land the best that it can be for for that which we are about. And we thank you for the one family that we are now here at this place at Hono Uli Uli. We pray that you would keep us together in your love as we continue to uh, care for this place and to make it the best that it can be. Mayor Caldwell, Governor Ige, U.S. Senator Hirono, and Secretary of Interior Sally Jewell witnessed the dedication. I think it's just extraordinary in this day and age that we could have a place lost to history for so long that impacted so many people. And it's just, it speaks to the shame that occurred with World War II and the internment and the desire that people had to move on. But if we don't tell stories like the one that happened here in Hono Uli Uli, we're going to repeat the mistakes of the past. And that's what this is all about. It's learning from these mistakes. It's recognizing that there are different sides to a war and that they impact people in very profound ways. In 1942, after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt issued an executive order authorizing the incarceration of Japanese Americans suspected of disloyalty. Selected groups of Japanese Americans, editors of the Hawaii Hochi and other Japanese language newspapers, um, the board of directors of the Japanese Chamber of Commerce, uh, Japanese language school teachers and Shinto priests were rounded up and initially put on Sand Island and then later brought here to Hono Uli Uli where they had a permanent um, internment camp. According to the National Park Service, 400 internees were held at Hono Uli Uli along with 4,000 prisoners of war. Hono Uli Uli was the largest and longest used camp to hold Japanese American internees. The camp was ordered closed in 1946, and soon after that, the military bulldozed the area. Hardly any internees spoke about what happened while they were incarcerated, and none of the Japanese American internees were found guilty of committing crimes against the United States. It wasn't until 2002 when a volunteer with the Japanese Cultural Center Hawaii rediscovered the camp. The volunteer found an aqueduct at the campsite while surveying the area. And in February, President Obama declared the internment camp a national monument. When we started this journey back then, I don't know uh, if any of us really knew what the final outcome would be. I am really honored and privileged to have been able to be with Secretary Jewell and, and Senator Hironos and Schatz and others uh, when President Obama uh, signed the declaration of the National Monument, and I'm really honored to be here. This truly is a story that um, deserves to be told, um, a story that I think is uh, of a shameful period of our country's history, uh, but really an opportunity for us to um, educate our children and uh, succeeding generations uh, to come. To learn that we had a site in Hawaii that was an internment camp was a revelation to many of us. 
and it took the Japanese Culture Center, JCL, community organizations and volunteers to call our attention to this site. And when I first saw this site in 2009, um, we saw some of the structures like this slab, although it's been cleared quite a bit since. But there are still many untold stories of discrimination in our country, and this is one part of that legacy, a dark legacy, but going forward, um, it's going to shine a positive light. According to published articles, Japanese American internees called the camp Hell Valley. Eight foot tall, barbed wire fence surrounded the 160 acre camp. There were 175 buildings, over 400 tents, and 14 guard towers. This wall behind me, this beautiful uh, cut blue rock stone wall that was built um, during this period of time stands as a reminder of what happened here. And it's a sad story. But the incredible thing is we're a country brave enough to actually talk about our mistakes. And by doing so, we don't repeat them again. So we have a monument that's starting out here that's a living, a breathing story of what occurred, a story that for many Japanese who were interned here didn't want to talk about. The site was lost. People didn't know exactly where it was because the internees didn't want to talk about it. But we're talking about it now to make sure that something like this never, ever happens again in our country. Agricultural company Monsato Hawaii donated the 143 acres of land the former camp is located on to the National Park Service. Secretary Jewell says the Park Service will rebuild the camp so visitors will get a sense of how oppressive life was back then. We will have experts from the National Park Service that will work alongside uh, those who have, are still living, that have history, and we'll try and tell enough of the story that people can come here and get the feel of what it was like when they were here. So I think that you can expect some of the vegetation to be removed. You can expect some of the um, uh, structures, tents, and so on to be recreated so that when people come and visit, they will have a sense of what it was like uh, to be interned here why it was uh, so hot and so exposed, not as we feel today with the shade, but, but uh, um, in, a, in a very, um, uh, very profoundly uh, uncomfortable way. And we will also expose, as we did with the archaeology here, how people tried to beautify this horrendous site, how they tried to line their walkways with shells and uh, make it more of a, of a livable community. So those are the stories that will be told, but we, it'll be living history. It will continue to be enriched by stories that come forward, and we'll look forward to telling those as well. I can't wait to see the story unfold in the coming years. We've got a lot of holly coal right now. It's going to be cleared, the site's going to be opened up, and I hope that they restore some of the barracks so you can walk in and you can smell the dry wood, you can feel the oppressive heat, and you get a taste of what this place was like back in the 1940s before the end of World War II. We want to close this program in the tradition of the Japanese Cultural Center. We bring children, we bring the public to this site. And our tradition is we conclude our tours with the singing of Hawaii Aloha. It's our tribute and in honor of the internees, of the people who were incarcerated here. Wow.